Hello everybody. Our lesson for today is arithmetic sequences and series. First of all, let's see what is that? What does it mean sequence? What is it a sequence? And sequence represents a group of numbers in which each number it is called a term and each term it has a place in general write it we can say let's imagine it this is the first term the second one the third one and so on the first term the symbol is a1 the second term it will be a2 the third one a3 and so on a and the small number 1, 2, 3, and it represents the place of the term. So A1 is the first term, A2 is the second term, A3 is the third term, A and it's the nth term. The sequence it is arithmetic if and only if between any two consecutive terms there exists a common difference to find the common difference d we will do a2 minus a1 which means the second term minus the previous one a1 which has to be the same a3 minus a2 which has to be the same a n the term before the a n it is written a n minus one. So then, if we know the common difference, then we can very easily find the missing terms in the sequence. So if I know the common difference from a one to the second term a two, I'll do plus the common difference from a two to a three. To find it, the A3, I'll do plus the common difference, A3. The first term missing after A3, it is called A4. And to find it, I will use the term before it, plus the common difference, and so on. We can write for the nth term in the sequence. So the nth term, it is AM. The term before, it will be a n minus 1. And the term after it, it is a n plus 1. If we know the common difference, to find the a n, we will do the term before it plus the common difference. I know the a n. To find the term missing, the next one in the sequence, I will do plus the common difference and so on. To find the missing term in the sequence, there exist two different rules. The first one is called the recursive rule. And the other one is called the explicit rule. The recursive rule, it is not used in general because it is useful to find only the few missing terms, the first few missing terms in the sequence. So we said, if I have to find the nth term, to find it, I need to know the term from before it, which is a n minus 1, and for this one I will do plus the common difference. The problem is that if the missing term is farther in the sequence from the given ones, this, this rule, it cannot be used. Again, to find the missing term using the recursive rule, we need to know the term from before it. That's why not always we know this term, which means the rule, it is not useful. That's why there exists the other rule, rule which is called the explicit rule. In which the nth term equals the first one a1 
plus the common difference times n minus 1, in which n represents the place of the term. The first one, the fifth one, the sixth one, the one hundredth one, and so on. When the terms of the sequence are added together, there the answer in addition, we know that it is called a sum, and that sum it is it will be called a series. So to find when we add the terms in the sequence a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4, when we will add them, this sum it will be called a series. The symbol for sum. It's summation sum, this is sigma. From i equals to 1, and n represents the number in the, in the terms, and ai, it will be the expl explicit uh, rule in the sequence. Easier than adding the terms, to find the sum of the nth terms, we will do the n, where n represents the number of the terms times the first term plus the last term in that sequence all over 2. It is given here a sequence. So sequence represents, as we said, group of numbers. So we can see the group of numbers 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16 and so on. The question is, does this sequence represent an arithmetic sequence? The sequence, it will be arithmetic. We said before, if and only if between any two consecutive terms exists a common difference, where the common difference equals A2 minus A1, which is the same A3 minus A2, which has to be the same, a4 minus A3, and so on, it will be the same An minus the term before it, An minus 1. Now, according with this rule, let's see if this given sequence, if it is arithmetic or not. So, we'll get, we look for the common difference. A2, it is 4, so 4 minus 1 has to be the same 7 minus 4, which has to be the same 10 minus 7, and so on. Let's see, 4 minus 1, it is 3. 7 minus 4, it is 3. 10 minus 7, it is 3. So the common difference, so the difference is the same. There exists a common difference. It is given a recursive definition. From this definition, we have that a n equals 2, 3, if and only if n equals to 1. So this n, it is 1. From here, we can write that a1 equals to 3. In this way, I found the first term. And that one we have a n equals a n minus 1, which is the term before it, plus 0 0.5. So this represents the recursive rule. Now the question is, from here, write the explicit definition of this arithmetic sequence. And we know that the explicit rule is a n equals the first term a1 plus the common difference times n minus 1. And we will take the values from the given rule. And we can say a n equals from the rule we said that a1 when n equals 1, the a1 it will be 3. So a1 it is 3 plus the common difference, we'll take it from here, which is 0 0.5 and minus 1. We will get 
this expression into the simplest form using distributive property and it will be equals 3 plus 0 0.5 m minus 0 0.5. We can write that a m equals 3. We will call it the like terms. 3 minus 0 0.5, it will be 2.5. Plus 0 0.5m. This represents the explicit rule, where m represents the place of the term in the sequence. Given the explicit definition, a m equals 16 minus 3 n minus 1. So this represents the explicit definition. We are asked to find the recursive one. But first of all, to find the recursive one, we know that we need the common difference and we need the term from before the a n, which it will be a n minus 1. So from this rule, I'm going to put the rule under it. This is an example. So the nth term we know is a1 plus the common difference times n minus 1. We compare the rule with the given example. And we can say from here that the a1 is 16. And the common difference is negative 3. So if we know the common difference, then to write the recursive rule, it will be a n equals the term before it, which is a n minus 1, plus the common difference, which is negative 3. From here, a n, it is given 45 if n equals to 1. So this n, it is 1, then a 1 it will be equals to 45. So the first term, it is 45. The more it is given, a m equals a n minus 1 minus 2. So this is the term from before the a n, which means we said before the a n equals a n minus 1 plus the common difference so the 10 before and negative 2, it will be the common difference. Then we can write the common difference equals negative 2. The a and the x rule, it will be a1 plus common difference times n minus 1. From before, we found that a1 is 45. The common difference is negative 2, so positive negative, it will be minus 2 times n minus 1, and this it will be the a n. So this is the explicit rule. We can simplify it. Use the distributive property of multiplication. It will be 45 minus 2 n plus 2, so a n equals 45 plus 2, it's a 47, minus 2 n. In simplest form, this is the nth term. This is the explicit rule used to find the nth term in that sequence. Determine if the sequence is arithmetic. So I will take the first one. So I have 4, 7, 12, 19, and so on. The first term, the second term in the sequence, the third term, 
and 19 it's the fourth term and so on the question is if this sequence it's arithmetic or not to classify it we have to find the common difference which we can see a2 minus a1 a2 equals 7 minus 4 and this one has to be the same a3 minus a2 which is 12 minus 7 which has to be the same a3 minus a4 minus a3 so 19 minus 12 let's see 7 minus 4, it is 3. 12 minus 7, it is 5. 19 minus 12, it's 7. And these ones, they are not equals. Which means that the sequence, it is not an arithmetic sequence. Let's try the second one. 34, it's the A1. 28. It will be the second term. 22, it's the third term, A3. 16, it's the fourth term, A4. We look for the common difference. A2 minus A1, it will be 28 minus 34. We'll check if it is equals 22 minus 28, which has to be equals 16 minus 22. And let's see. 28 minus 34, it's a negative 6. 22 minus 28, negative 6. 16 minus 22, it's a negative 6. So this, it's common difference. So the, the sequence is an arithmetic sequence. In which the common difference is negative 6. If, if the sequence, it is arithmetic, then we have to find the 52th, the 52nd term. The symbol to write the 52nd term, it is A52. So this one equals what? To do minus 6, minus 6, minus 6, 50 times, it will be very hard. It will take long time. And we can do mistakes. That's why the recursive rule, it cannot be used. In this case, we are going to use the explicit rule, the explicit formula, which is a n equals a1 plus the common difference n minus 1. And we will substitute a1, it means the first term, which is 34. Plus, the common difference, it is negative 6. Times, the n, the n in our case, it's the 52. Minus 1, and equals, we will simplify it. We will find that a 52 equals the first term. 34, it will be positive, negative, it is negative, so it will be 34 minus 6 times 52 minus 1, it's 51, and this one equals negative 272. Let's try more. This is an application, real-life application of the arithmetic sequences. A high school auditorium has 18 seats in the first row. So, we read the question and instead of words, we are going to use symbols. So, 18 seats in the first row, this is going to be a one the first term, which is equal to 18. And 20 seats in the fifth row. This is going to be the fifth term, which equals to 26. The number of seats in each row, they form an arithmetic sequence. Question number 8. What is the explicit definition of this sequence? And we know that. The explicit definition, the explicit rule is an equals 
a1 plus common difference times n minus 1. We will apply this rule using the values given. So I can write a n equals the first term it is given 18 so substitute plus the common difference we do not know it d times n minus 1 so that we can complete the question to write the explicit definition we still have to find the common difference so this common difference it will be the variable we know that to find the value of a variable we need to write an equation that equation we will get it from the fifth term so we will write a5 the fifth term it is given 26 we will apply the explicit rule for this term we know that a n equals a1 which is 18 plus the common difference times n minus 1. So this rule, we will apply it for the fifth term. So instead of a m, we will have the a5, and the value for it is 26. So 26 equals 18, plus the common difference that we don't know it, the m, it will be the place, which is 5 minus 1. And minus 18, we will solve the equation, minus 18, 26 minus 18, it is 8, equals 5 minus 4, 1 is 4, times d, it will be 4d. So from here, the common difference is 2. If we know the common difference, then we can write the explicit rule of this arithmetic sequence. So, a n, it will be equals, the first term we said it's 18, plus the common difference we found it 2, times n minus 1. We can leave it in this form, or we can distribute and get it into the simplest form. It will be 18, plus 2 n, minus 2 which means that the nth term equals 18 minus 2 is 16 plus 2n. So you can work with this or you can keep it as it is and simplify it at the end when you substitute for n. In June, this is another real life application of the arithmetic sequence. In June, you start a holiday savings account with a deposit of $30. So this is the first deposit done in June. I will write it A1 equals to 30. You increase each monthly deposit by $4. So each month after June, you will do a plus 4, plus 4, plus 4 in your account, which means that the 4 will represent the common difference. Until the end of the year. The question is, how much money will you save by the end of December? From June to December, there are 7 months. The sequence is arithmetic because there it's a constant increase. It's a constant difference. So if I know the money A1, the June 30, to get the December, I will do plus 4, plus 4, plus 4 until December. But the question read it well. It is not, we are not asked to find how much money in December. The question is, how much money in all of these months are going to be saved. So for this, we have to add A1, the total money. It will be given by the money in June plus money in July plus money in August 
which means A1, June, July, August, September, and so on, where they are at seven months, so it will be plus A7. So this is what we look for. To find this sum, we are going to use the series. So to find the sum of all of these terms, we are going to use the series. And we said that the sum n equals n times a1 plus a n all over 2, in which n represents the number of terms. In our case, the number of terms is given by the number of the months. From June to December, there they are 7 months. So this n, it will be sum 7 equals, we will substitute instead of n, we put the 7 times. A1, it's the first month, June which is $30, plus AN, it will be the seventh month, which is December all over 2. To continue, we need to find the A7. So we cannot get the sum because we still don't know the A7. To find the seventh term in the sequence, then we are going to use the explicit rule, which we said is AN equals A1 plus the common difference times N minus 1. So we will apply the explicit rule to find the seventh term. So A7, it will be equals A1 was 30 plus the common difference, it was 4 times n is 7 minus 1, and this equals 7 minus 1, 6, times 4, 24, plus 30 equals 54. So, in December, $54. If we know the first month and the last month, then we can get the sum of all of the money in all of this time. So, n. 7 times the first month plus the last one, 54, and all over 2, which it will be equal to $194. So, from June to December, he will have saved there, they will be saved $294. Let's try more. It's about question 14 in your book, page 38. And they say, a company will pay Becky $120 for her first sale. So if it is first sale, we will write it A1 equals to 120. The first term in the sequence, 120. For each sale after that, they will pay an extra $31.5 per sale. So then this, each sale after extra 31, this is going to be the common difference. So she will make $151.5 for the second sale. So this is the A2 equals 151.5 for the second sale and $183 for the third sale. So A3 equals 183. How many sales? The sale, when we write A N in this case, in this case, this A N term represents the money and n represents the sale so this is the first sale the second sale the third sale it is given common difference so all of these sales they will form an arithmetic sequence in which we know the first term and we know the common difference the question is how many sales the sale 
it is this n. So we look after n equals what? Will Becky have to make to earn at least $2,000? The $2,000, it will be the value of the n term. The value of the n term. So to find the variable, we need an equation. The equation, it will be represented by the rule, explicit rule, applied to find the nth term. And we will write a equals wait a second wait a second. Here they say how many things to make to earn Earn at least, it means all the money earned, 2,000 represents the money earned by adding all of these sales. So the 2,000 represents the arithmetic series. So we are going to work with the arithmetic series, first of all. And we will write SN equals N times A1 plus AN. All over 2. The sum, it is 2,000. Equals the sale, the number of the sales, it is n times. A1 represents the first sale, which was 120, plus the nth sale, we don't know it. So the money in the nth sale, we don't know it, over 2. In this way, we wrote an equation. But this equation, it has two variables, the variable n and the variable a n. So to solve one equation with two variables, we cannot do it. That's why one of them, we have to find it. To find the n, this is our question. We cannot do it. So what can we do? We will try to find the nth term. We know that the nth term is a1 plus the common difference times n minus 1. The first term was given. And the common difference, it was given to. So all we have to do now is to substitute A1 and substitute in D that we can write the AN. So then it's going to be AN, it will be. A1 was 120 plus the common difference 31.5 times n minus 1. We get this expression into the simplest form by using distributive property here. It will be 120 plus 31.5 n minus 31.5. Collect the like terms and simplify them, it will be equals so 120 minus 31.5 it will be equals 88.5 plus 31.5 n. So this value, this expression, we will substitute it, put it instead of a n in the summation into here. So then it's going to be 2000 equals n times a1 120 plus the AN we found it 88.5 plus 31.5. And close the bracket and all divided by 2. Here it's 1. We will get the same denominator doing times 2 and simplify by it. 2 times 2,000, it will be 4,000 equals. Distribute the N to remove the bracket. It will be equals 120N plus 
88.5 N plus 31.5 N squared. So in this way, we, we obtained uh, a quadratic equation. To solve the quadratic equation, we have to put it in standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. So we will do minus 4000 minus 4000 in both of the sides. And we will find 31.5 and plus 208.5 n minus 4000 equals to zero. To solve this equation, you can do it on the calculator or you can use the quadratic formula, but at the end, you will find two values for n. It will be n1 equals 8.43 and a2 equals negative 15.05. Keep it in your mind that the N represents the sales. And the sales cannot be negative, which means we cannot work with the second solution. And in the same time, the sale, it cannot be a decimal number. So then from here N, we will round it up. It will be 9 sales. So the total money, the 2,000 obtained after the nine sales. Let's try more. It's about question 17 in your book and it is given. With her half marathon quickly approaching, Talisa decides to train every day up to the day of the race. She plans to run two miles the first day. So this it will be A1 equals to 2. And 3.2 miles the fifth day. So A5 equals 3.2. A. What is the explicit definition, the explicit rule for this sequence? So we know that the explicit rule is a n equals a1 plus d times n minus 1. What do we know from here? The a1 we know it, it is given to, but we do not know the common difference. To find the common difference, we are going to use the second term here, the fifth term given. So, we will write A5, we will apply the explicit rule for this A5. So, what is it A5 equals? It will be A1 plus the common difference n minus 1. We go down and we substitute A5 is 3.2 equals a1 it is given to plus the n it is 5 so 5 minus 1 4 times d it will be a 4d solve the equation 4d we will find that the d equals 0 0.3 so if we know the first term and we found the common difference, then we can write the explicit rule a n equals the first term, it is 2, plus the common difference 0 0.3 times n minus 1. So this is the explicit rule. Point B. Which day of training, so they are asking us, the day. When we write a n, the n will represent the day. So which day of training will she run the distance of half marathon, where the distance is a 13 miles. So we are asked to find this day. Then we are going to apply the 
ex explicit formula into. So we'll write it again. A n equals A one plus common difference n minus one. The A n it's the value, it's the term in place n. And it's the date. But the value, it is 13 given. So instead of a n, we will substitute with 13. Equals a1, it's the day, it's the distance in the first day, which is 2. Plus the common difference, we just found it. So it is 0 0.3 times n minus 1. In this way, we obtain an equation with variable n. And we will solve it. Distributive property and minus 2, minus 2. So 13 minus 2, it will be 11 equals 0 0.3 n minus 0 0.3. Solve for n, it will be n equals 37.66, approximated 38 days. So after 38 days, this it will happen. 13 miles, it will be the distance she is going to run. 13 miles, it will be in the 38th day. Thank you.